Hello, listeners. Welcome to another episode of Reckless A Talk, our TTRPG interview show, where we sit down with some of our favorite writers, players, GMs, and streamers to get to know what makes them tick. I am, as always, your host, DM Nathan, and I am really excited to introduce you to this week's guest, Chris Hislop. They are head of production at Roll Together RPG, which manages not only a stable of more than 50 paid players and DMs creating streamed D&D content three times a week, but also the Rolling Together stream team over on Twitch, spotlighting an array of diverse voices around the world. Chris has also run campaigns for the official D&D Twitch channel, LFM Productions, Adventurers Wanted, and of course, Roll Together RPG. We spoke at length about so many wonderful things, ranging from transgender advocacy at and outside the table, the importance of professionalism and communication when making things, being wildly inclusive, safe, and supportive, and the power of group storytelling. Chris has long been a person I've enjoyed and admired the footprint of in this space, and I had an incredible time with this interview. I have been on a few Roll Together productions before, but never shared the table with them, and I'm just going to put that factoid into the world and just kind of manifest that for myself, uh, especially, Chris, if you're listening. Hope you enjoy and learn as much as I did. There are links to things we talk about and Chris's content in the show notes, and we will see you on Tuesday for our next episode of Reckless Attack. Enjoy! Why, hello, Chris. So, <laughs> what a what a powerful introduction, and so I'd against love, my impression of you. And I'd so, I'd love I'm, to I'm give the impression it. I could live up to that, and I absolutely can't. <laughs> that was yeah, that was a powerful <laughs> way to start. But uh, hi, so hi. lovely to see you, you across too. this. Uh, well, technically, for the listener, visual medium or audio medium, but for us, audio visual medium. Uh, how are mm-hmm. you today? I am well, thank you. How are you? I am I am jazzed beyond belief to be here speaking to you today. For those who do not know, uh, first of all, may, may, may they be long pitied, uh, but who do not know who you are, what you do, could you give the people just a little bit of info about, about yourself, your pronouns, all the good stuff? Yeah, I'm Chris, I DM online. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, okay, you know, I think I think that is technically true. Um, you know, I'm not. I'm going to record an intro where I can be a little bit more specific. I'm but kidding. like, that's up to I'm you. I'm kidding. I'm I'm Chris. I use they them pronouns. I'm the head of production at Roll Together. That doesn't mean I'm in charge. I'm definitively not in charge. It's better for everyone. I think we can all agree. But um, I do a lot of the. I do DM quite a lot. I play. A, more so recently, which is lovely. Um, I do a lot of the production work. I organize our team of editors. I organize our scheduling department. I make it sound much, much bigger than it is. It's still like, you know, there's five people. But like- I, I, yeah, I was going to say, let's not let's not undersell how large of an operation it is, which we will be getting into as well. Okay. All right. Uh, then I will, I will just say for now, a lot of production stuff, the buck stops with me, if you know what I mean. But mm-hmm. I don't do all of it. Yes. Well, and and just to just to kind of set the scope for for listeners, mm-hmm. you guys uh, an excellently produced, well edited, oh, so uh, actual play and interview TTRPG channel. Mm-hmm. How many how many days a week are you guys live with three. either show with shows with yeah whatever? Yeah, uh, three, three three days a week. There's three days a week, two actual plays and a talk show um, that might be upping to four relatively soon, Ooh. but I can't talk about. Um, and every single show is fully edited, sound, uh, audio, SFX, visual effects, uh, multi-camera setups, the works. Yeah. Yeah. And also is all paid, uh, for cast members and DMs is like, again, exceptionally produced, has nice, clean overlays of the whole thing. It is a, it was a very early exposure to like, ah, People in this sphere <laughs> can have their shit sound and look good. Oh, you can cuss, by the way. Also, I didn't. 
I usually also include that in the preamble. We, you can, on, you can honestly, say if, 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 if we couldn't say bad words, you'd struggle to talk to me. Yeah, that's uh, just that's a fair. thing. I, I'm, I'm English, and I know to most, I'm not actually English, but I, I've spent most <laughs> of my time here. So uh, for Americans, I understand sometimes that my, my <laughs> Twitch sometimes sends us messages saying, like, you swear a lot. Really? And that's okay. No, that's no, fine. No, it's not a big deal. Like, they're not saying you can't. Like, we're an over 18 stream. There's no issue with it. But <laughs> it was a note from, like, oh, I was like a sponsor thing where they went, you guys swear a lot. And I went, yeah, we're an English stream we don't have that issue and the reaction was very much like mm, okay like it wasn't right. a big deal <laughs> just we just wanted to, to mention it we noticed well, <laughs> it, it, okay we have sponsors and of course they sometimes message say you never more of this bit more of that and that's absolutely fine it's every now and again when i have a lovely chat with one of our you know sponsors or supporters or one of the people who's invested and they go can I just check? And it's things like <laughs> it's things like asking us about gender because because we're so uh, gender diverse, absolutely, if not as diverse in other areas as much as I'd like to be, but we're getting there. Um, the number of times that the sponsor go, "Hey, watch one of your streams." Um, can you explain this whole agenda non-conforming thing? Because I think one of my workers might be, and there's no company policy. And you go, oh god, yeah, of course, oh, can yeah, it's really. Is that, what like, is this freelance consultation? Yeah, we'll yeah, take I was it. Say, okay. You're like a, a, an off-branch, like HR wing, basically. <laughs> I've done consultation in the past, so I'm very happy, especially if it's someone who works with us, and that can be in any capacity. I mean, I've said this before: anyone that we work with, and that can be in any capacity. They don't just get like, here's the logo, and they're great, and here's some, here's some product. Like, they're joining, and the same with the stream team, they're joining a, a, it's a group of people who all want to support each other. I mm -hmm. don't want to use the word family because, for me, that's not necessarily positive. But, yeah, right. um, I, I just did a whole, had a whole thing about it myself. and Oh, I saw your like... tweet, TTRPG family. I agree with you, by the way, if you want to talk about that <laughs> later. But um, I, I think that... Once you are working with someone, it's kind of, I mean, I believe you're reaching a point where you should be engaging with what they do and they should be engaging with what you do. Yes. To the point where if they say, we loved that, could you do more of that because we think it sells our product better? The answer isn't, no, the art. It's, <laughs> we can probably work around that if you want us to. That's absolutely fine. But we're going to have to come at it from an artistic angle because we're not just going to go buy more of this stuff. It has to come <laughs> from a place. Otherwise... Because no one wants to watch us say buy more of this stuff. Like, no one wants to watch a corporate shill. I mean, the fact that we are corporate shills is sometimes a bit difficult, but I don't mind it so much because every single thing that we shill comes from a place of positive <laughs> shilling because we they're all products that we use. And for people who aren't familiar, or even people who are familiar sure. with you and and don't know the full scope of it, it's I know you you have partnerships with um with Idol Champions, the yep. the like the the click game from Wizards of the Coast That's with I think with Hero Forge right. with uh, I know you give away a lot of Wizards of the Coast stuff. Uh, do you, I think do you, uh, D and D Beyond I think is yes. on your list. Yep. Uh, and I'm just gonna like I think there's dice. I think they're like <laughs> yeah we went all right. You've asked so I'll tell. We work yep. with a company called Phoenix Dice. They're amazing. Mm. They're based out mm -hmm. of Taiwan. Uh, they're yes. part of our stream team in a very elaborate way, uh, which means that. We're supporting um, members of the wider group of people who we run streams and organize streams with, as well as financially, which is really, really nice. Um, here at Forge, you mentioned Ultra Pro. We do a heck of a lot with Ultra Pro. Ultra Pro <laughs> are, are fantastic and give us loads of product, and we share that product out with a lot of cast members. That works really well for us, too. Um, Alchemy RPG we work with, they that we're starting to do. They have a whole... Um, live play forum online warriors of waterdeep the wonderful yes. delightful warriors of waterdeep they've we've have actually run streams with their characters so built a whole thing for them that was fantastic fun to do um and then elderwood boxes we've oh, worked yes. with we worked with elderwood for a couple of years now and they just make some beautiful stuff which again we we have done like make one for a character style competitions and things like that so it's all about finding integration and about going if we have integration, how can we showcase that integration? Which is, is yes. the whole like here at Forge, we make minis of all of the characters, and then yep. they are all on screen. So I you have, have a like instant. I know what that person looks like. Yes. Now. I have personally created several <laughs> Hero Forge minis <laughs> yes. for a variety of different appearances. Yeah. Um, but but we will we will oh we will get into mm. all of those details, Chris. Oh, we my. will we'll talk more about you know we'll talk shop we'll talk business. I but feel like, exposed. That's not, you know, but at the end of the day, what what is the business, Chris? You know, it's it's oh, it's games. It's games. Is you know? it? And, but well, is it games? Is it? 
that's where we're going to start our conversation. <laughs> I'll, let you do, I'll let you do your skills first. I'm sorry. I mean, we can start there if you like. But. Especially for people who have been doing it for a long time, um, yep. both both personally and and in a kind of public and or professional capacity. Sure. And just always, I, I like hearing kind of origin stories kind of to start. So how did how did you kind of get into tabletop role playing <laughs> games just initially and what grabbed you about them? Right. Well, I was young once. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start there. Yeah, you know, back I was in the, born back in the forties. Um, but um, <laughs> I was very young once, and when I was young, I liked fantasy novels. And um, I think, like, we're talking like twelve, thirty. I mean, I I, I devoured the Star Wars expanded universe, which Ooh. is not well written at all. <laughs> but it's 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 taking stuff that I'd seen on screens and yep. going, here's developing it further. Yeah, and that was inspiring. And then I picked up third edition D and D when I was, I believe, seventeen, sixteen. That's again showing how old I am. Um, the, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not saying anything. My face is stone. You know, I don't know if I am old for D and D now. I feel like I might be, but I, I just have no context for it. I also sound like a one of our one of our players started playing with the red box. Like, oh wow, there's, okay, no, I yeah, did not do so that. No, no, yeah, I mean, um, it, it, it it runs the gamut, so. It's true. I mean, okay, so when I was 16, 17, where this first started is my school librarian, who was a personal friend, yes, I was that nerd, she said to me, we're getting rid of a bunch of magazines, and I thought these might appeal to you, because you know, I like fantasy novels, and she had like 100 back copies of Dragon Magazine. Wow. Yeah. So I looked at them and went, this is kind of cool. I like this. This is great. There's loads of stuff <laughs> in here. This is great. Awesome. And then I bought... um the rule books for three and um i was off i didn't play very much you know like my mm -hmm. school wasn't like there's an rpg club there really wasn't i was running the school newspaper but i wasn't into sports so a lot of the like school team stuff just didn't happen but when i got to university i tried to set up a couple of games and i think i probably played about 10 sessions total in third edition not a lot and it was fun we had a good time it was great but we didn't go like we must do more of this this is great yeah. Yeah, it was a thing that you did, but yeah. it wasn't like the hooks weren't in you yet. Well, by that point, we're talking 3.5 starting to kick in. And with the most love in the world, it was awful. And um, <laughs> not as bad as 4, that was the worst. But um, it wasn't great, and it didn't inspire me, and it didn't inspire my friends. So we didn't really do very much with it. So it became these, like, I have these books, and I look at them for inspiration and love, and it isn't this lovely, but I don't do much with it. And then... Yeah, after that, I started playing in a fifth edition game when I was in my, dear God, early 30s, maybe before <laughs> then, I can't remember, When um, with an ex-partner of mine. And they said, we should, we should do some theatre around this, because we both worked in theatre at the time. And I was like, yeah, maybe, do we just put games on stage? And that developed into Adventurous Wanted, which I ran with uh, my ex-partner for a number of years, about... Up until about three, four years ago, I don't, I didn't, I don't know about that. What was, what was that? Um, I'm not going to go into it too much because it didn't end well. Very but reasonable. Suffice it to say, the idea was sound. Um, their ambition was to put D and D on stage. My ambition, after we did it for a couple of years, was to put it online. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the big differentiating factors between what we were doing. Like we had skipped to online because we were talking just start a pandemic. Yeah. So we'd already started doing shows online because we couldn't meet up in person anymore. And then that became really? more and more shows online. Their interest waned and they pulled back a little bit and that's all fine. And then it turned into, hang on, online has more. We can do a lot more with this. And I mm -hmm. will not deny, I absolutely absorb season one of Critical Role. And that was the sort of, there's a lot here that I like. There's a lot here that I would do differently. Not in a yep. thing that it is bad, more of a... That you would do differently. That I would do differently. And then when we started doing it, I did do it differently, and <laughs> it developed from there. And then when AW fell apart properly, like it mm -hmm. was quite a calamitous fall apart, um, I picked up the pieces of the role together. And it was uh, me and uh, M, my partner, we looked at it and went, what was right, let's keep it, what was wrong? Let's bin it. And that included, do we want to pay people? Mm -hmm. Because AW never paid, I mean, it paid a couple people some money, but not everybody. And it was balanced wrong. And the whole thing was a fucked up mess around money. Whereas when we came into all together, we went, this is easy. Why, why was this complicated? All we need to do is go, this is the flat fee you get for this. And then it's our job 
to find the money to pay everybody. And if we don't find the money, we'll just call it a day. Like, it would be sad, what a shame, but also we have sponsors, we have investors, let's just see what we can do. And from that point on, we've never skipped a payment. Yeah. And it's not impossible to do. It's expensive, don't get me wrong. And we have to have lots of deals on the table to make sure we can keep balancing paying everybody. But at the time, I was working for another streaming company briefly, is doing like some one-off DMing, you know, and we all got paid. And then I realized that some of the people behind the scenes weren't getting paid. And I'm like, well, why are we getting paid and they're not getting paid? Like something's gone wrong here. Mm-hmm. Something about this process is, is, is incorrect. And then I started realizing how many of the streamers that I watched and loved and thought these people are great were hobbyists, weren't getting paid. Yeah. And when mm-hmm. even people who, who had like most probably, we are professional kind of lines on their websites and stuff. And then you watched it and went, but no one here is getting paid. Mm-hmm. And it really, to coin a phrase, ground my gears. Because what the fuck, man? Like, this is a job. Like, I appreciate it's not everyone's meaning source of income. Sure. But you pay people for their time. It's not rocket science. And every time you don't pay someone for your time, what you are doing is devaluing what they provide. And maybe this comes from coming from, you know, theatre. That theatre is an industry that suffered greatly with how much you pay people. And we just went... When my ex-business partner left and someone who had different ideas about what they wanted, mm-hmm. you know, uh, when when that grouping started to split a little bit, the ones that were left behind and the ones that decided to keep running the company were largely the ones who went, we don't want to devalue people. We want to, what's the point in putting thousands upon thousands upon thousands of pounds into, or dollars, if you will, into technic- <laughs> technical equipment and um, stuff like that? What is the point yeah. if we can't pay people? And that became the bottom line. And since that point, we've paid people. And I'm quite militant about it. I'm very rarely militant about things. But, you know, (laughs) we have players who say, it's okay, you don't need to pay me. And I go, no, you invoice. And if you don't invoice, there's money sat there with your name on it for when you do. Like, if you say now, oh, I don't want to invoice. I ain't got time. I don't care. I'll go, cool. That's earmarked now. There's a little bit of our account just called you with your little name on it over there. <laughs> and if you force me to, I will shove it down your throat because you will take this money because yep. that is, we contract. Every single person is contracted with a bit of paper yep. that talks about stuff that a lot of streamers are like, who owns the IP to your character? Yeah. We've got contracts on that. Very important question. That was so fascinating to go mm. through again, just now, now that I have, cause I, I, the, the first time that I was on your guys's channel was interview. Mm. Um, yes which was a kind of different, different structure. Yeah. That's not contracted at all. Yeah. But, but <laughs> I, that was so fascinating and so mm. different than, than ever, than every other experience that I've had. Not that I've been a guest player on too many places, sure. but, but yeah, of, of the level of, and this is something I, I definitely want to, will be talking about. I've already, there's already seven different tangents that I want <laughs> desperately to go on. But but the level of structure that you guys have, not just around contracting about, hey, here's what happens when you can't make a session and here's the expectations and gently, mm-hmm. but 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 clearly communicated, um, but also about safety is that it's- there's always a disclaimer and there's always yeah. stuff about gender equity in every single stream. And it's Absolutely. always up front. It's always there. And it is it is so much more structured than so many other places, which I think speaks a lot to the amount of seriousness, <laughs> I guess, We're that a you're professional taking. Company. I mean, and anyone, the amount of professionalism. Exactly. Any any streamer out there who says, oh, I, I'm I'm just doing it for the love and oh, I don't know, I don't think about stuff like that. The only person you're screwing over is yourself. Like we've not had this happen, but we've had conversations around it happening. And there've been points where we've talked about it at great length. Like we couldn't have made the Warriors of Waterdeep streams if we didn't have cold, hard discussions around who owns the IP. Mm -hmm. And that they obviously do, but we, they sent us a contract saying, here's what we want to do. And we went, cool. We'll have our lawyers look at it because we're fucking professionals. (laughs) And yeah, they expected that because a business expects a business to work like a business, not like, oh, that sounds fine. I'll just sign it and who knows what I'm signing away. That yep. is how you screw yourself over. What is the point? And yeah, lawyers are expensive, but you know what? It's an expense that's worth paying. If we can still mm-hmm. pay everybody, then the next thing we do is pay to keep ourselves safe. Like, okay, let me give you other good examples of things that constantly badger streamers and is something that is really easy to do. Our contract has a policy in it about if you're dating anyone in the company, just tell us. 
Yeah. That yep. isn't, you have to tell us, and if you don't, you will be no. We broken. No, it's it's a code of conduct. It's, yep, please. So tone, that if there are the issues, we know. Is very nice. Like, just because yeah. we want to know. And not yep. we want to know because we're looking for goss, but because mm -hmm. if we know what's going on, if there are issues, we can address them without yep. a fucking tweet storm. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not saying tweet storms won't or don't happen. Of course no, they do. That's not. More often <laughs> I can't promise not, that. <laughs> but more often than not, all of this shit is down to not knowing what people yeah. want from each other, what's understood, what is permitted, what is expected. And you know what contracts do? They deal with all that shit. Yep. <laughs> I know it. I, I know it sounds boring. And frankly, there is a lot of <laughs> doing it professionally can be boring at times. Like, here's another one that's a bit weird: music. Yeah. Every single show is backplayed with music. Of course it is. It makes it better. It's fun. Every single one of those pieces of music is either freeware or we've bought the license. And I know streams that don't do that or go, oh, they only use license free, and that's fine too. It's really not difficult to do, and it's also really not expensive. It's a little bit of extra work. And it is all about the work. I, mm -hmm. I really feel very strongly that this is a job and you do it properly. Now, maybe that makes me old and fuddy duddy, and I'm okay with that. You know, <laughs> if that's what it takes to be, to, if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. And frankly, <laughs> I don't mean to sound too immodest, but <laughs> we have a ton of sponsors and supporters because we go to them and say, professionally speaking, here is what we can give you. And they say, professionally speaking, here is what we want. Yeah. It's, it's not the question. The question. You know what the question is. People must have asked you. They ask me all the time. How did you get sponsors to give you money? How did you get people to support you in doing this? Because we can't do that. And I don't want to say to them, you started your email with, hey, dude, and that's not the way you do it. But <laughs> being polite, being professional, these things take no effort. And when you yeah. do them, people will treat you like a grown up. And hey, maybe that's what treat streamers need. Yeah, yeah, totally get that. Uh, so are you, is this your quote unquote air quotes? Is this your yeah. job? Are you yeah. like streamer? What you do is this. Yes. So yes, you you said you were in in theater, obviously, kind of yeah. previously. Yeah. Um, and COVID, buddy. COVID. <laughs> yeah, I, you are not, spoiler alert, you're not the only theater <laughs> no, person I know. <laughs> I've interviewed who has been like, well, theater kind of got upended. I guess I'm, I play D&D &D and tabletop now. I mean, but, it just died. It just yeah. went off a cliff. And people keep going, if you say that it died, it will have actually died. And I'm going, guys, you can't keep pretending it's real. It's... <laughs> I worked in uh, what's called Off West End Theatre in London, so a lot mm -hmm. of like smaller shows, wow. and yeah. most of them have stopped happening, and the ones that do happen are putting up huge amounts of money because they're not getting any audience in to pay for revenue. It's, it's a mess. It is a yeah. hot mess, and I looked at it and went, frankly, fuck this shit, I'm out. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's no need for me to, to break my back trying to get, I was working in PR, trying to get like f five interviews for a show when it would make zero difference to what the producer expected and wanted because they were used to things beforehand where 20 was totally yeah. normal. Yeah. So, no, it was awful. <laughs> and so why no. would I keep doing it to myself? I'm still doing it a little bit. If anyone is watching who is um, listening, who is who I'm working, who shows I'm working is, on. Is interested in such things. Well, but... no, no, I, I do a bit like, I'm currently basically in the market for, I do stuff for friends occasionally because they are friends. And yeah, we they still pay me because they're professional and I'm a professional, that's what happens. But I wouldn't put it down as my job on like a form. You know? So like you said, at the top, you edit, yeah. you produce, yeah. you are, you know, you, you are, you physically are there in Zoom calls, like yeah. at least signed in on your computer yeah. for recording. And, Correct. and obviously you DM and you play. Yes. And and you help empower other people to make sure all of these things happen all across the thing. I hope so. And 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 maybe I'm I am over uh, you know over speaking, no, but I it feels like you probably would not be doing tabletop role playing game content to that level if you did not enjoy tabletop role playing game content. You are, so what for you? You are correct, sir. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so so I'm I'm curious, especially now have made it your kind of full time thing. And empower other people to make it, you know, a, a professional part of their lives as well. Certainly try. What what kind of drew you not just into tabletop, you know, kind of like mm -hmm. as a hobby, but what also what also drew you into? I am going to do this like for real and for audiences, mm -hmm. and then the extension of that, 
and I'm going to do it professionally at this high level. I'm going to make this structure and I'm going to make this what I do. Uh, and that's a fascinating arc for anyone, but especially for you, since it has kind of like continued to grow into the more structured place that you find yourself. So what at least to to bring it back around to that long tangent question is what what hooked you originally just in terms of like what does tabletop do for you as a as a human being tabletop is one of the only art forms i've been involved with where you are live improvising in a semi serious capacity mm -hmm. with other storytellers where the structure is defined by the rules of a game. Mm -hmm. Like, I've done improv classes, I've done theater improv, I don't like it. And <laughs> um, long form dramatic improv is even more niche than D&D, &D, would you believe? D&D, <laughs> um, &D, I'm gonna use D&D &D as, as, well, I mean TTRPGs, but it's, it's yep. the only one that I play, and I'll get to that in a sec if you want me to as well. It is a forum where I can sit down with talented people and we can develop stories together. And from a DM perspective, I'm not going didactic, here is my story, join the fuck in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going, here is my preset. And I fully expect you all to go hog wild in this preset. And I expect you all to take it seriously. Yeah. I expect you all to care. And if I do things to make you care, that is to make you care enough to engage with it and make choices in there. So... It's emotionally manipulative on a grand scale, <laughs> but it's doing so to try and draw yeah. performance and idea and creativity out of very talented people. And that goes for a home game as well as for live play. Um, live play, what brought that then to a point of putting it on stage in front of people? During AW's tenure, it was about, can we run for a hundred hours? Can we run for, you know, it was, it was like marathon stuff and endurance stuff. And yeah, you can, it's fine. It's debilitating, but you can do it. <laughs> um, I've run a show for 150 hours. It's, it's achievable. Ooh. That's fine. I, 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 I can DM <laughs> 10 hours a day without breaking a sweat. That's not a problem. The thing is, was that a forum where we were trying to get the best out of people or were we showcasing what the system could do? It was the latter. Mm -hmm. When we started going online and everyone sat at home in their comfy chair in front of their computer, suddenly it became, this is no hardship. We're not putting this on anyone. Come to this theater at this time and work your guts off. No, sit down in your comfy chair, pull a curtain so that your cats and dogs aren't bothering people and tell a fucking story. And suddenly people were coming out with these wonderful arcs and concepts and ideas where it wasn't just, I'm a funny joke character who tells a joke. There's still a bit of that. And I, that, that, that is a hallmark of D&D &D and I'm A-OK -okay with it. Yeah. it. But it was also real emotional engagement, real contact, like D&D &D games were in my home game environment, where it is often, what are you doing for the next four hours? We're just going to sit down and talk at each other and occasionally roll a D20. <laughs> and my home games were already going in that direction. The live stuff had not touched it. And then when we started streaming, it started touching it. And I went, okay, we can do so much more. We can do yeah. so much more. Are you kidding me? We can build this out. We can make this the kind of situation where people can have arcs over multiple seasons, can have characters who come back. And this, this can be a TV show. And I've worked in TV. And I knew at that point that, okay, we are creating a studio. We are creating an environment mm -hmm. where we are generating multiple content out of the same backbone. I mean, mm -hmm. like the Star Wars Expanded Universe, I know where my roots are. And what we are doing with that is we are going, how can we tell interlocking, interweaving stories? And it just developed wonderfully. The, the whole interlocking, interweaving came from a very early conversation that uh, me and my ex-business partner had about accessibility. If you're a new person watching our show yeah. and you've got to catch up on 78 hours of content and that's like not even halfway mm -hmm. through the first season of Critical Role, you're, not, you're never going to. You're going to start at some point and just try and catch up. And that's okay. I don't mind mm -hmm. that. That's not a problem. That's what D&D home games are supposed to be like. You know, that's the whole point. Shorter run games, you have less time. No one does shopping episodes. No one does... Let's make elaborate plans that never come off episodes. It just doesn't happen. 
shit hits fan and you run with it because you've only got 12 episodes if you're doing a full length show for us and that's considered long for us 36 yeah, hours I was gonna is say, long a lot <laughs> of the ones that i've seen are four exactly I, like is the not i don't know about the majority breakdowns but of the ones that i have seen there are tons of four episodes it's four and 12 and like one we try and, and break them most up of fours, it. 12 sixes ones eights sometimes it gets to, to allow that accessibility and also i love that show and i love that character cool there's four shows with them that already happened so you're going to get their backstory go and watch those they're on the youtube they're easily accessible and it works. We know that it works because we see our fans do it. And that's obviously where that line comes in. It also means that if you're if we're making a new show, we never have to worry about, oh God, will it be too complex for people? If they don't get it, they can always go back and watch the previous stuff. Yeah. Or there's other episodes. Other our other fans are amazing. They've set up a wiki for us, which you could just read what yeah. happened in the previous episodes <laughs> in like 10 minutes if you really want to know what's going on. That's fine. And creating that kind of world, that kind of setup where you can just throw things in and where people can play characters for years and develop yeah. all those things about them. And it's just amazing. I love it. And it's slowly developed into a point where now we have to have like a proper like DM spreadsheet of these other things in the world that are real. And yeah. just <laughs> trying to set up timelines that sort of make I've sense. I've heard, yeah, I've never obviously has not, have not DM'd for, for you guys, <laughs> but have heard just enough whispers of now the kind of like, construct of this is what the world see my is. mind map it is unbelievable <laughs> <laughs> but it's lovely that it exists yeah I'm well also... and I, so oh go ahead well so i was gonna say i want to talk about the structure certainly because sure. it is it's very interesting to me but sure. but but first it kind of struck me as really interesting and and i have to ask for you uh, whether it is whether it's the same answer from when you started or your answer now, sure. what is what is having an audience kind of mean to you? Because theoretically, you right, you could recruit people to have short games and just play it online for friends, right? Yeah. You could just do that. You could yeah. do kind of what you're doing now, except just privately. So, yeah. what is there anything for you that having an audience, doing it live, having it be a thing, like a product? And and something consumable and connectable with, mm -hmm. what does that do for you, if if anything, and why is that something you you have have now pursued for for many years? I have three answers. On the one hand, I love it and it's amazing because <laughs> in a really, really you know part of me that I sometimes wish wasn't there. Oh God, I love the attention. Um, I but, mean. Oops, oops, pot kettle. Uh, oops, people we're in a mirror. People telling me I'm oh, awesome? No. <laughs> what? People, yeah. people breaking through my mental barriers. My mental health is not great. Hearing people saying, you're really awesome and I love what you do. Oh my God, it's a boost. It's amazing. Please, Chris. Chris, you're really awesome. I love what you do. Oh, please stop. Now I'm going to be modest. Um, <laughs> anyway. um, it's wonderful to have people like what you do. Of course it is. Yeah. Beyond that, the number of people that come to the channel and watch an episode or two and say i thought dnd &D was for nerds and losers and now i don't um wow. i just wanted to get back into it because my wife daughter child granddad whatever is getting into it and i wanted to share in their hobby um i thought this was going to be super hard to access but you've made it so accessible and easy mm -hmm. Am I sharing my hobby with people in the hopes that more people join in on my hobby? Fuck yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's good. That's what we yes. want. So that's answer one. Answer two. I don't care at all. <laughs> it's not entirely true, obviously. But I, th I run home games. I run loads and loads of games. And I don't put more or less evident to the home games or the live games because they're <laughs> home or live. You know, they're my games. Mm -hmm. I love them. They're um, games, yep. I... I love that people can engage with it as an outside eye, but I'm yeah. also pretty adamant, as people who've seen me DM before, would be like, you can watch, but you you cannot tell me what dice to roll. You cannot tell yeah, me same. how to... Like, we toyed with the idea of, like, um, donate some money, you know, dice mm. roll kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. I, I we didn't, because I watched four or five streams that did do that, and went, dear God, I fucking hate this. Who, who, the, who the fuck do you think you are? <laughs> Coming in here, telling us how to play our game? We're professionals, motherfucker. You are watching <laughs> us. Like, there is... Most of us are actors, some of us are not. But there is that kind of, like... You don't, you don't call up the producer of Bridget and, oh, the people do these days. 
Oh no! <laughs> I made myself sad. I oh, made no. myself sad. Uh, that was genuine. I did not plan that. That is me yep. just going. Oh shit! People do do that. They tweet about things they hate about shows, and oh, sometimes it does change. Yeah, oh, well. it's just awful. Why? I don't think the sanctity of art is important, but I do think the artist should be allowed to do what they do, and then you judge them, not yep. do what they yeah. do, and then you say, "Well, I judge you." And now you can't do it anymore. Like, mm, if it's money based, sure, but otherwise, get the fuck off my lawn. Like, yeah. <laughs> this isn't about you. Um, yeah, there's an element to which having an audience is uh, could be could be like Matt said it. Sorry, Mercer said it before that the having an audience is wonderful. It's beautiful. They get so inspired, so excited, and they yes. can also fuck right up. <laughs> Because don't tell me the rules are wrong. I don't care. Don't tell me that <laughs> character can't do that. Fuck off. It's not important. We're telling a story. D D is the framework. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, what's number three? Um, number three is very heartfelt. So if you have something you want to add in before that, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll say no. No, I was just going to be talking about my own show uh, in a way that <laughs> I probably would have edited out later. So <laughs> this is actually saving me for myself. So please, please carry on. No, Nathan, please tell me about your show. I love your show. You're an amazing DM. And well, if you want to you. wax lyrical about it for five seconds mm -hmm. in in my interview, you are welcome to, obviously. Uh, d d I, I am now angry at you for tempting <laughs> me to do that. I am very upset at you. Uh, friends, we, yeah. are, we are on a, a pause of our relationship and the oh. positivity therein because oh. uh, you have... Um, really tickled a part of my brain that is not supposed to be tickled at this point in the interview. Why can't so, we take positive, like, I love positive affirmation, but why can't we fucking take it? Why can't we just I, say thank you and move on with our lives? Because I, I, because my brain would rather die, apparently. It'd rather be like, oh, well, it's nice you said that. Let me jump out the window. Like, mm, where, I, where's the hole just, I can sink into? Thank you. A hundred, <laughs> it's, I, I think, a, a, you know, I mean, we could get deeply into it, but I definitely do. Th I think it is, for me, at least, certainly very... I spent a lot of time learning that like, ah, actually like what you're doing is not right or is not quite, you know, is not quite what, to the level you should be doing or you should be doing better. You should be doing more. Other people are kind of doing it like this. Why aren't you doing it like that or to yeah. that level? And now my brain is like, well, I mean, that was good points, right? And, you know, <laughs> a couple of years of therapy will has helped me a bit, but like it's still, it goes still loud it sometimes. Yeah. No, I know what you mean. That taps into the third reason why I like having an audience. Um, I am a transgender person. Watch this transgender person be loud, proud, funny, engaging. Yeah. Watch this person play your hobby. Hate them if you want to hate <laughs> them, because guess what? It, you cannot do worse than the world does to me. You cannot. On a daily basis, getting a message saying, oh, why are pronouns and the fuck all you good people? And me just going, cool, and you you are gone. That's not relevant. <laughs> our, our mods are very good. And we, we also, like, we have mods on every show and we pay our mods. That's another thing that's very important. <laughs> but anyway, that's, I digress. Um, I want to be visible in this space and mm -hmm. good in this space. And I get about <clears throat> one or two messages a week every week from someone who is questioning their gender because they watch what we do mm -hmm. has seen what we do and wants to ask questions because they don't understand and someone or people who just want to say that they're glad that we exist I think even if all the money dried up and even if all of this stopped being a business I would probably still find a way to stream that would just be less professional because I know that it's making a important cultural difference that I really want the world to make. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all jokes aside, that is probably more important to me than anything else that we do. Mm -hmm. We don't enforce that players must play characters that are of the gender to their own. There's one show where we did because uh, in Warriors we made very clear to them that you're not going to gender bend with your characters. There's no reason that you should. However, we are going to make every single person not cast as their own gender just because otherwise it will be very heteronormative and we do not want that. Um, but otherwise, every DM is a showrunner, has the same sort of perks as a showrunner, which means they get to define everything about what they're doing. That's um, 
we it we don't have like a do Marvel now have a universe person? Star Wars does. They have someone whose job is to be like the person who knows the universe. Like yep. that is a job for I think yep. those two at least. But we give people access to all the material that we've done. We say you can do whatever you want with anything in there. If it involves a player, please check with them. Um, if they're not in the show themselves, people are welcome to do whatever they want and, and push messages that they want to and tell stories about things that matter to them, and that's fine. Guess what? There's always going to be non binary and gender non conforming NPCs in my campaigns. Always. Mm-hmm. And they are almost always going to not be wonderful, lovely people who are perfect <laughs> all the time. They're going to be mm-hmm. varied because they are. They're going to be male presenting, Nate. They're going to be male presenting. That exists. <laughs> hey, Hollywood, have you noticed that not all gender non people look like andro people? Yeah, I'm pushing an agenda. Of course I'm pushing an agenda. <laughs> Anyone who says they're not pushing an agenda is pushing an agenda. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's working. So why the hell would I stop? Mm-hmm. And and that was something that kind of from the jump, just kind of learning about you guys and consuming mm-hmm. some of your content. And certainly now that I've been involved in the whole thing <laughs> is top of mind emphasis mm-hmm. of like, hey, we are going to be inclusive and we are going to make that clear, not just internally and externally. Yeah. Um, and, and as you've said, obviously, you personally have a obvious reasons why you want to do that mm-hmm. but but that is that for me is a that's a that's a that seems daunting right especially like you said in this hobby where there is still so much mm-hmm. uh problems mm-hmm. <laughs> i guess the question is how how early from the jump did you you and kind of the people that you work with of course from the beginning kind of make it a a conscious choice to be like, we are going to be extremely forward. We're going to be extremely transparent and extremely inclusive. And has that been a difficult thing for you to to keep going as much kind of like fuel and joy as you get and being like, yeah, fuck the haters. And and I know I'm making a difference, <laughs> but like, is that, has it been difficult for, for you to continue to, like you said, not just be yourself, but be yourself on behalf of of others, mm. if if that makes sense. Makes sense. Um, I think it's such a fundamental part of how I play characters in DM that I couldn't... Like, if I was working for a company yeah. that said, hey, we're a company where there, there is no color and there is no gender, I'd go, cool, I'm not working with you. Because <laughs> yeah. it would just be pointless. Like, we'd get nothing done. But um, <laughs> I'm allowed to be that, that flea bitten. So I am. That's, this is fine. It's the way it is. Mm-hmm. And we encourage our cast to be flea bitten as well about the issues that matter to them. Like we have um, players of color who have basically said pretty categorically, "Hey, all my characters are characters of color. That's just a thing now because there aren't enough." Okay, and we've yep. gone, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Do, cool. do, do, yeah. do you do you? That's important. Like our uh, racial diversity is not as good as it could be, and we're trying to work on that and find bring in more players and develop that out. But I'm also very wary of bringing in players as like, hey, you currently stream with these people, you're coming to us to do like a one-off, and then we'll probably never see you again. I'm very wary of that. We've had bad experiences with that in the past of um, people not being as professional as you'd hope, because they've got their own thing, so why do they care about your stuff? Yeah, um, sure. And unfortunately, the their priority is elsewhere. And that's okay. Their priority is allowed to be elsewhere, but then why would we muddy the water? Let's make our mm-hmm. lives easy. Let's go, okay, if we meet someone and we like them, we're like, you should, you know, we'd love to see you stream with us. That's not a come and do a one show. That's, we've made an investment in you, a time yeah. investment, if nothing. I know financial as well by that point. Um, we want that investment in you is because we think you're awesome. We now want to see more of you as much as we possibly can commit, if your schedule permits. And that can be quite intense because we're not saying to someone, come and do this and la-di-da, have a good time. It's, no, you're part of the team now. You're part yeah. of a group of people who are going to talk about new ideas and be de- and develop new shows together, and that will just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's good. We want that kind of like the players run the channel kind of vibe to it because it's important. Like we've got people DMing with us now who started off as fans, and that isn't to say if you're a fan, oh, I should message them with my big idea. Right, Please, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. more of yeah. a that person started off as a fan. And then messaged and said, I really want to be involved more. And we went, okay, have you got any experience of streaming? And they had some. And they went, I'd like to do a little bit. Let's do a practice game. We did one. They were, they were great. And then we went, okay, let's build the cell. Let's do more. And now they're DMing. Like, these, these things 
when you're making a company of people, you have to decide whether you want to be didactic or whether when you want to be open-ended. And we very much went, if we're open-ended on all creative choice, if that becomes everyone's choice of how they want to do things, but if we're didactic about our politics, I think that's probably going to be the better way forward. Mm -hmm. And by politics, I don't mean like, which party do you vote for? None of them. They're all shit. Um, (laughs) It's... um, what are your social politics? What yeah. are your, like, what, what matters your values. to you? What are your values? Like, we've had people we don't play with anymore because they went, why do we need to play safe? Do you want someone to feel unsafe? Have you, have you, Bummer. generally white cis man, ever felt unsafe at a table? <laughs> have you? Because if you haven't, you have no right to say other people shouldn't care about that. Safety is incredibly important. And oh, but I can't, like, conversations we've had, I'd love to DM this, but one player said they don't like that. Should we just recast them? Going, no, you should rewrite. And I don't mean that because your idea isn't good, it's fantastic, but next time you need to say to your players, before they're even cast in a show, this is going to be this. Like, Mm -hmm. um, we we are, I don't know when this is going to go out, but we're just either in the process of wrapping or um, about to have wrapped uh, the 12th part show I'm DMing called uh, Wreckage of Mithra Noor. I loved it. But that was a campaign where I walked in saying, guys, I want this to be um, potentially PvP heavy. And I know some players absolutely love it, some absolutely hate it, so I made very clear from the off, I don't expect you all to like each other. I don't expect you all to be together the entire time. And I don't expect you all to uh, come out of this smelling of roses. So if you want to make characters that might steer into that, or if you want to play your characters as not getting on with each other, please do but it meant that those players all went cool we know what's going on we're going in with that and you know some of the original cast went that's not for me and that's okay we moved them around Mm -hmm. and um you know in another campaign that's about to happen we had a long conversation about do uh, is everyone okay with this gross thing that some people really hate some people really don't like and we're gonna touch on that the ability to do all of that before you even start to play means everyone is aware going in of where their lines and triggers are which is very important and also, as players going, sometimes something is fine, and then I'm, I'm in the moment, and it's not fine at all. The ability to play X cards or pause cards or however you want to do your player safety, there are thousands of ways of doing it, is important. Mm-hmm. And yeah, if those values mean that we can't play with everyone, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to play with everyone. There are no. many people I actively do not need to play with, yeah. and that's a good thing, in fact. <laughs> Well, and and something that I was really curious is is you guys, like you said, not just have a large stable of mm-hmm. players, of DMs, of people who are involved in many different ways, About 50, but I also think. what fifty? About fifty, I think. Yeah. Wow. Um, but also, you you have you make you do make investments where it's like cool. You are you are on the roster yes. of 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 people and like i know i have gotten dm'd a few times to be like hey are you free to do this thing and it hasn't worked but like that that has not decreased the frequency certainly my interest but also the frequency be like hey yeah you're still a part of this yeah um how do you go about and i'm sure it's a a beyond (laughs) you but how do you go about kind of feeling out people and professionals and actors and dms to kind of be a part of that and and kind of what goes into that for you, especially knowing that there's always not a week goes by that some, you know, someone is is dumb and or bad or is hurtful or X, Y, Z things. Um, oh, but how, how do you proceed kind of going, going, okay. going through that? Um, now, this is going to sound very boring, but the first thing is a CV. And I know that sounds boring and very professional, but we are professionals and therefore CV mm-hmm. is quite important. I need to know that you worked for, you know, Price Waterhouse Coopers for four years. I don't give a shit about that. But have you streamed before? Do you have experience of streaming? How long have you played D&D for? Um, do you play regularly in home games? So you, like, we don't need you to be shit hot on the rules, but what we like is the rules to be a starting point. And if everyone's at the point where the rules are like, I know how this works so I can use it to move forward to the next storytelling point, grand and we want combat to be you know as quick as it can be for fuck's sake so yeah (laughs) knowing what you're doing is relatively important and be that as a streamer or as a um player that goes a long way um frankly streamer over player i know that's cruel but um Mm. knowing Mm. you can love DD to your heart's content but if you don't know how to perform or play to an audience or play it for an audience you're gonna struggle it's different it is very different um 
And from that point on, it, I'm afraid, as with all these things, it is just vibes. What else mm -hmm. can we do? Like, if we meet someone and like them and they play in a game and we're like, you should play more, and they go, mm, not sure I've got the vibes, then they're not getting our vibes either. And that's okay. Um, you cannot <laughs> be ahead of this person's been a dick online. You just can't. Yeah. It's just impossible. And sometimes it is a, sometimes it is a, nothing sometimes it is a flash in a pan and it will go away in two three days and it's no big deal other times it is wow this person did some awful shit and we didn't know but i think that would be the same in any other capacity yeah i think that's just that's just working with humans is sometimes mm -hmm. humans make mistakes and like we had one where our, our 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 original stream team leader was um outed online as being a horrible sex pest it was uncomfortable. It was awful. We had zero idea. It's not something that comes up very often. Um, but the warning signs came through. We started going, these are some serious warning signs. And then the warning signs were acted upon by a few people and it became obvious this was an issue and we just cut ties immediately. Mm -hmm. It was a shame. But there were more than enough people going, this person hurt me for us to go. We don't want anyone on staff who's hurt people. That's just not, not right. Mm -hmm. um, I think with a lot of this stuff especially when it comes to streaming and streamers we like to gossip we like to start fires and it's worth being able to spend time sifting through the debris mm -hmm. like we had one recently where one of the one of the stream team members was having some issues and all it was was sending a message going hey I've just seen this, talk to me about it Mm -hmm. And the message I got back was perfectly understandable. And it was an, okay, well, these things happen online. It's all good. Let's just take a deep breath and hopefully it'll die down soon. Mm -hmm. What more can we do? Yeah. Um, so building not just on kind of that idea, mm -hmm. but on on your, your experience, mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about how you experience, handle, and overcome times where you have failed. I just find it very interesting, especially for people who have been creative and publicly creative to kind of just talk about their relationship with failure uh, in, sure. in whatever form and whatever circumstance that is, um, just because there's so much to, to learn, I guess. Okay. Let me start with a creative failing because that's useful, right? Because that's something we can all go, I've experienced that. It's more common to creatively fail than anything else. Um, Every single show that I do, every single episode of every show that I do, every minute of every game that I do, and I'm not exaggerating, my brain is telling <laughs> me that I fucked it up. Yeah. Because I have I have an anxiety disorder. <laughs> anxiety is literally that. Every mm -hmm. time you do anything, mm -hmm. your brain goes, you did it wrong. Yep, every time. Fuck that up. Fuck yep. that up. No, that's never going to work. You didn't make it land. You, you could have done and you didn't. Uh, you you could have done that differently. I and mean, something is improvised, it's even worse. Oh, um, yeah. I can't fight that, so I don't. Mm -hmm. I just go, I'm going to have to assume that my brain will tell me that every single thing that I have done is wrong until it is not. And yeah. even then, it is in a for it is in a <laughs> format and forum where it's around forever if you want to dig for it. But let's be honest, most people won't. So it doesn't matter. Move on. There is a certain amount of any creative endeavor I have ever done, especially in the process of D&D, &D, which is a, ah, it didn't work, but the next session is literally happening tomorrow. It's going to, there's going to be another one. This character will do that that time. Yep. It will be fine. And that is a wave of anxiety that kind of rolls, <laughs> you know, five steps ahead of me. Yeah. But I don't think that's ever going to go away unless my medication changes for the better. Um, and even then, I think a big part of the creative process is the ability to go, I am creating live in the moment. If you're expecting that to be 100% perfect, yeah. you, you, you're crazy. That's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I know I've been DMing and DMing live long enough to know what prep I need to do it well. Right. I've been DMing live long enough to know that when I don't prep, these things go wrong. I know when to avoid them if I haven't had time. <laughs> I learn something new from every game. And it's not always like earth shattering sometimes it's real yeah. basic but from every game i learn a small thing and then either don't do it again that would be simplistic or 
aim to find other ways around the issue. Mm -hmm. Like the one I will always come back to is we are we are people watch us because we're playing a game and it's a game that they like and it's a game that we like and we love to play. Yeah. Is it the bread and butter of why we do what we do? For some it is, and that's grand. Is it for me? Sometimes I love making a really optimized character and being like super badass and doing optimized <laughs> yeah. shit. Who doesn't? Hell yeah. It's just yeah. It's lovely. It's, it's, it's very really, fun. really fun. But <laughs> I'm there for the role play. That's what yeah. I'm really there for. So sometimes that gets in the way of um, we're making a D&D &D game for people to watch. Mm -hmm. And I know it does. And part of me doesn't care at all. And part of me goes, you are beholden to your audience. And there's a reason you're beholden to your audience because you put it in front of them for your validation. So give them what they want. You idiot. <laughs> so that sits on both sides as well. So in terms of failure with that, I think there is an element of um, knowing where I'm creatively precious and trying to draw back on it a little bit. And also mm -hmm. knowing where I'm not creatively precious, maybe going, maybe you should be. So there's mm -hmm. an element of that that falls back and forth as well. Exa a lot of examination, it sounds like. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. And well, assessment. Me? Overthink? No. Um, <laughs> well, but, that, yeah. Mm, so <laughs> there's a couple, a couple ways <laughs> to phrase it, and <laughs> those can be right, I would say. <laughs> mm, there's the anxiety again. But yes, um, that is, yeah, of course. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of big failure, professional failure, of course I've made mistakes. Why? Mm hmm I'm not going to pretend that I'm a saint because that would be ridiculous. Of course I'm not. And anyone who thinks that I am, I'm really sorry. I'm a human being. <laughs> I, I, I have mm -hmm. as many flaws as you might think. Um, there are times where I've made choices that have caused all sorts of mess. Mm -hmm. There are times where I've really pushed for something and it's led to nothing. And it's been a complete waste of everyone's time. When the company broke up, it wasn't clean. There was a lot of anger, a lot of frustration, a lot of personal relationships that were broken and damaged by it. And obviously out of that comes some real hardship and some mm -hmm. really difficult emotional moments with f people who used to be friends, people who used to be partners, everything, the works. It was a complicated, messy endeavor. Of course. Yeah. In the process of that, unfortunately, there was a business relationship that really soured. It was really quite badly damaged by it. And um, we spent thousands, thousands with lawyers to try and rectify the issue, to go, we don't understand what happened. We don't understand how we can get through a wall of we're not talking to you anymore because of a mm -hmm. slight that we know isn't true, but we have no way of refuting, you know? I spent months expecting a tweet storm that would end all of this months just sat mm -hmm. there going it's going to come i know it's going to yep. come there's going to be a, i'm going to wake up today and it's going to be the day that today's the day today's the day and it never came and we got to the end of the time with our lawyers where we were working on this and the conversation it ended on i will never forget we'd used them to, the lawyers had found a way to get information out of the company that were refusing to talk to us. And we'd managed to find a way of getting information we could, we could act on and work with. And we'd done all of that. We got to the end of it and the lawyer said, if it was going to be an issue, it already would have been. If it's going to become an issue, just call us. Legally speaking, there was a point where this could have been catastrophic, and that's past now, the worst you can get now is some bad press. And that was really interesting. The idea that mm -hmm. emotionally things don't have a shelf life really, but practically they do. Yeah. That was a really interesting gear shift around, it, it changed how I handle professional problems. Because my, my line of professional problems now is just, be cut and dried. Be brutal if you have to be. Draw a line. If that's where we're going to draw a line, draw a line. What if they get angry and say something? Then they get angry and say something. That's okay. Mm -hmm. We cannot make everyone like us. We cannot make everyone wish us well. And we cannot, for the life of us, stop people from being transphobic. It's just not mm -hmm. a thing we can do. Like, we spent so much money to find out that a company was basically transphobic already. And this was the pushing point. We really didn't want to lose the relationship. We pushed real hard. And then we read some internal emails and went, that had to be shared because we were mentioned in them and went, dear God, this ah. is awful. 
this is horrific. We didn't need to know that. <laughs> we didn't need to mm -hmm. chase this that much. If someone doesn't want to spend time with us, don't get obsessed with why. Chances mm -hmm. are you don't need to know. Just say, okay, move on. You'll find other ways of working. I mean, it, it strikes me as very similar to your, your creative philosophy too. It's yeah. just like, yep. You know, again, lines, like we drew the best lines we could. Yeah. We did the amount of prep we could. We thought about it. We, we, you know, did what we needed to do and we're being uh, conscious of it. Yeah. But it just sometimes still doesn't work and you have controlled what you can control. And exactly. Moving forward accordingly. This is a slight shift, but also kind of not a slight shift. Good. That was Do getting you, very maudlin. You, <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, God, you're being human. What a horrible, unforeseen consequence. Please let me poke fun at myself, if no one else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. See, see, this is the one spot where I can just shut off my own brain and be uh, like, well, I will compliment you, you, uh, you, you dumb idiot, because <laughs> I, won't, I won't let people compliment me, so I will do it for others. See, that sounds like um, a line from a movie. Let me compliment you, you dumb idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you, and, and just thinking kind of in the scope mm. of, of the different roles that you play at, sure. at Roll Together, no pun intended. So many roles. <laughs> what do you identify with the most in terms of like, when you think of yourself mm -hmm. as, as a creator mm -hmm. and part of the creative process, mm -hmm. are you a DM? Are you a showrunner? Are you uh, actually in my heart of hearts? I am still a player. Are you like I'm kind of a producer now? Sure. Um, how do you kind of like self-identify in in the kind of creative structure, or if it's even outside of the the creative structure? Buddy, I'm transgender. Self-identification has never <laughs> been my strong suit. Uh, <laughs> I I know. I said it, I kept saying identity out loud. I was like, I know Chris is Chris is going to say something, and they are right to to some, say it. <laughs> some kind of gray area. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Like a. Can it be, does it have to be one of two choices? I don't know. Maybe it's somewhere somewhere outside Old of that. The world is binary choice because people are sheep. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, okay. I think I'm a DM first. And I say that because it is the thing that I am most inspired and excited about. Because mm -hmm. it's the thing that I came into this as was the creative. I didn't come yeah. into it as the producer. Yeah. Um, I am a producer. It's something that I'm very happy to do. Yep. But if you said to me what's on my CV, if I was like pitching for work, if I wasn't doing right. this anymore, you know what I mean? I'd say editor. I know that that's weird, but I produce on the content for Twitch. Congratulations will be the response you get for that on a CV. Whereas I've edited with a team <laughs> seven hours of content a week for the past four years. Yeah, that's right. the point where someone go, oh, so you do quick turnaround. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> ah, okay. It's ah, all, all yeah. webcam, so I know exactly, exactly. That's the kind of thing where it'd be a business conversation, you know. Um, and also, like when you're working with a team, especially around editing, you have to learn process boards and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of practicals that go into um, this job that are not what I signed up for. But also, well, if you, yeah. <laughs> if I, if if this was a business and we had unlimited funds. Well, if you had a limited funds, this job wouldn't be required. But you get my point. Um, yeah, may we, may we all may we all wish that upon ourselves and and sure. our friends. If you said to me, what, <laughs> if you could do anything within the company, everything else was covered by other people, and money was fine, what would you do? It would be talking to sponsors and supporters. I mean, I used to work in PR. I'm mm -hmm. I know how to pitch. I know how to talk to mm -hmm. people, and I know how to go on a call with someone and say, "Tell me about your shit." And they go, "Here's my shit," and I go, "Cool, we're going to make a show about that." Like that's I am I am used to that conversation, and I like that conversation. It's one that I have experienced. I so, have well, and now and now I have to ask because mm -hmm. I I have I also as a former journalist and PR person yeah, yeah. have gotten asked this multiple times in in interviews. Mm. What is what is your what is your role together pitch? How do you self describe uh, the all the things that you do with as varied of stories as you get and cast that and everything? I do or that roll together does that you, that you as a as a as an entity roll together oh, does. Um, what's the roll together pitch i can tell you it's on our pitch document <laughs> uh, we also we also have one of those yes it's <laughs> it's um it's streaming rpgs online and it's um with a very diverse cast like that is it like mm -hmm. i hate to sound reductive and i don't like to be reductive but pitching is all about being reductive of course yeah if you yeah, said to absolutely. me what's the difference in you and critical role i go the number of people and the fact that we're not all white cisgendered people mm -hmm. like that is if you were saying to me well but cr exists why do we need you it's there's no access points it's a very white cast 
it is a very heteronormative cast. It's a very white, cisgender, heteronormative story, frankly. And that's with Matt trying his absolute best to inject some stuff in there that isn't. And I don't mean to be harsh on them. I really love them and I love their shows and I know some of them quite well. It's the... There were points in, in their second season where they brought in non-binary characters and none of them pronounced correctly. And you go, guys, you can't stand there on the most liberal platform in the world and say, look how liberal we are, and then fuck up pronouns. Like, that's that's 101. Are you shitting me? <laughs> this is not hard. Like, okay. Like, I don't know if you saw this. I don't know when this is going out either. But recently, um, Jamila Jamil decided it was appropriate to tweet that if, yeah, it was a real you don't put your, <laughs> if you don't put your pronouns in your bio, I don't know what your pronouns are. You're not wrong. Or so fuck you. <laughs> that is not the message. Well, because it was the handle too. It was it was I don't mm. click on your bio. So it was even even more like not okay if because you it was don't like you know, gotta shorthand it. Use a neutral pronoun. Why is this rocket science? Spoiler alert, you can really write. As as a writer, you could really write around not knowing a lot of shit, including pronouns. Yeah. Yeah. Using gender neutral pronouns is not difficult. <laughs> and learning how to use them is not difficult. And making it your modus operandi, I understand it's difficult, but for it's not that difficult. And I'm really sorry if you find it's difficult. It's it is it's, not prohibitively difficult. It's not even that difficult. Like, it's nothing. Mm -mm. No. It is willing to be wrong a couple times and make a conscious choice and effort. And when someone tells you you made a mistake, don't, don't, don't fight back. What is yep. wrong with you? Just say, I'm sorry. It's not Oops. hard. Yep. My bad. Yeah. Move on. If someone gets my pronouns wrong and apologizes, I don't care because they've apologized. It's fine now. We've talked a lot about the structure of things, about mm -hmm. kind of the mission, about all kinds of things. And and now I'm I'm back to being curious about you as a storyteller mm -hmm. and as, as an enjoyer of stories. Yes. Dating back to, to when you were a kid, just just housing fantasy novels and dragon magazines mm -hmm. all the way to now. What are the what are the types of stories that, that you enjoy consuming and telling? Whether it is thematically whether it is like yep it's all it's fantasy whatever fantasy that's what i do uh but have you noticed something especially now that you've been in a creative field for so long mm. about yourself and the kind of themes that you like to explore or the the flavor or the tone um that you that you enjoy mm. um i think if it's sci-fi or fantasy i'll probably like it i think that's a given um <laughs> i, I mean I just like standard dramas as well, but Same. I tend to enjoy them less for the complexity and detail of the world building or the storytelling. It's more like, do you have, do you do that? I do this. I have TV on in the background while I'm working. It's like background fodder. It depends on what if I'm, I'm editing, editing. I don't obviously, but all the other right, stuff. Like, yeah. some, I know some people who listen to other podcasts while they edit their no, podcasts. No, I cannot And they do that. are just no. alien creatures to me and like very powerful. Good for you. I would, I would melt if my, it was, my brain would run out of my ears. If it was music on one and voices on the other, I could probably do it, but I Even don't. then, I can't. No, I just can't. Each for each. But um, anyway. Yeah. I like things that are epic. Mm -hmm. I like things that challenge like how big stories can be. I like things that have real repercussions. That's always good. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be epic necessarily in terms of like, will affect lots of people, but stuff that has epic scope and scale. Yeah. In context. Um, I like God's... I like challenging perceptions of gods and what gods can do and what that means for mm -hmm. people and the interaction between those two forces. Like warlocks and patrons fall in a similar category for me. This idea that there is something that is bigger than you that needs you to like them or needs you to support them <laughs> or there's all sorts of lovely questions that I really enjoy and I really like both as a player, as a, as a DM. It comes up a lot in what I do. Um, I like the feeling that something is bigger than you. I like the feeling that you've tapped into something that is just bigger than you, that you go, this. Mm -hmm. I, how, how am I supposed to comprehend this? It is so yeah. much bigger than me. I like that. I like that feeling, which comes, like, there's a lot of lovely films that do that wonderfully, like um, Danny Boyle's Sunshine springs to mind for some reason, but things that challenge your neck, ch challenge how small you are. That's always mm -hmm. nice. I like that too. I like doomed romance. Mm. Love doomed romance. 
I like when things don't go the Hollywood way. Mm-hmm. Like that sounds Absolutely. like a small thing, but I like when you see a scene happen and then suddenly it breaks the like I have loved you forever. Who are you? Like I love when someone goes yeah, right, oh, whatever it is. <laughs> like yeah, can, just when you can snaps hear the glass shatter, but you can hear like the <laughs> oh wow you. Okay, <laughs> you did. Yeah. Oh, oh, this is different than I thought it was going to be. Okay, let's see where this goes. There's a scene towards the end of Mr. Trudeau I'm very proud of where it's like all this build up was like, oh, I have found you, I have found you. But then it just suddenly just, <laughs> <laughs> and everyone around, like you can watch other players just going, oh, no! just crunching up into the <laughs> smallest awkward ball because it's so awful. Um, <laughs> yeah, those are all good. I love all of those. Um, I like when things develop their own mythology. Mm. So obviously, like writing D and D in particular is obviously very good because it, you develop some mythology. I like that kind of thing. That's always fun. When someone says like a name in a hushed tone, and you as the audience are going, <gasps> "Yeah, right, yeah." <laughs> like that sounds like it's super important. I like when people can go away and Google it. So the fact that fans made a wiki makes me incredibly happy because God, when I'm watching a show, I'm so jealous of you guys. <laughs> they did it. We, we, I, I help I update it sometimes, but the fans set it up. Oh, it's such a, it's I, great. I, I learned that about you guys very early. And I was like, <laughs> God, if only, cause I tried to do my own wiki and it went, my brain did not like that activity. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so now I've just been kind of like casually sitting back to like, well, I don't know if you want to make a wiki that could be cool or whatever. It's whatever, you know, like just putting that out there. Not it is, you have it, is, to, it makes me so happy. I'm not going to lie. I'm not even going to try and sugarcoat this. It is one of my favorite things that people have done for us. It's just so cool. Because yeah. th- I read stuff on there and go, oh, yeah, I remember that. Like, <laughs> I've completely right. forgotten that that was a thing that we yes. did. It's great. A hundred percent. Oh, we, I love we it. Were, we were thinking about putting my DM notes up as like Patreon content. I'm like, no, it's not that's not going to go well for you. Yeah. And so very similarly is like, <laughs> Oh yeah, that did happen. And I could like control F into 14 different Google documents and the, find it. Or the problem or it's just is on the wiki. And the, isn't that nice? The problem is right. With stuff like um, sharing my DM notes, I can't share my DM notes. It's, mm. Oh, it's a combination of random nonsense. Yeah. Points where I've just written swearing down for pages yeah, on end. Cause I can't yep. think of something. Yep. Or, D and D Beyond Encounter Trackers. That's all it yeah. is. That's all my yeah, DMing it's, is. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not as robust no. as I feel like people. It's like you guys don't understand. I would have to rewrite all of this. I'd be writing and it, it would after still, the fact, and it would still mostly be not what happened in the episode. Like it would. It's not going to be a good time. It's one of my favorite things about DMing is improvising on such a grand scale so that it changes yeah. the whole universe <laughs> because you went eh, and just came up with it then and there. I love that. That makes me really happy. And of course, I sit there with notes going, well, if I do this, then that. But then players will always do something you don't expect. And that's gorgeous as well. That's yes. just part of what makes it good. I like, I like characters. I like characters. I like characters. Mm-hmm. I like iconic character sets. Like I like that D&D has 12, mm-hmm. what, 13 classes. Um, and I like that you can go, that one's the fighter. I don't know why I like mm-hmm. that. I just do. Um, when I read a fantasy novel, I can go, that person's that, that person's that. I think it helps me organize. Yeah. Well, you know? what's, oh, gosh. What's the word? Um, uh, cliches, uh, archetypes. Yeah, archetypes. I will say that I love DMing archetypes as well because mm-hmm. I know that no matter how you know off the wall I go, there's still the ability for the audience to go, I understand what that archetype is. Yes. Like, yes. I use TV tropes a lot to go, I'm going to put in this archetype. Are there certain examples or things I can look at and go, I could use that? Like, there's a there's a party NPC in Mr. Noor, which is normally a DM no-no of having just a powerful character that travels with the party because it's just a DM insert. And it is a DM insert. There's no lying that obviously that character is a DM yep. insert. Yep. yep. But I purposefully <laughs> background them and very purposefully get them out of situations where they would be doing important stuff. Um, and while going through all of that and working that out, I was looking at um, Big Bad as part of the party because that was always the plan is that they were the Big Bad as part of the party. And there's so many little like things people go... <gasps> They're going to reveal their plan. And that's what they, and they yeah. didn't have a big plan that was all secret and shit. We kind of <laughs> said it in the first episode. But it was that kind of, if I just, if I just play this as, mm-hmm. oh, what was I doing it in the other day? It was a home game. I was playing in a home game where my, I'm um, playing a genie warlock whose uh, patron is a Dow, which is an earth genie. So they're obsessed yes. with money. And um, I'm playing them as like, slightly like a crypto bro. <laughs> 
and, um, like mm-hmm. their eldritch yep. blasters flicking me up. Check their, their eldritch blasters flicking coppers at people again. Like, yes, yeah, it's great. it's it's yep. all money. Yep. And yep. every Check. time we had a conversation about something that was in the hold, I did the pause, and you know what I mean by that. Yes, we have to make sure we save the turnips and i did it every time <laughs> to the point where another player was going you know how you're doing that stop doing that and i was doing things like i'm not pausing <laughs> just bringing it back in that kind of thing knowing that that is a a trope and by now a meme and you can play on the idea that that meme exists yes. means that even if someone has never seen the show before and goes who the fuck is this character five minutes they'll know because i'm trying to tap into stuff that yeah. people understand and stuff that exists already there are times where yeah. i try and be like out of the box, you don't know what to expect from Definitely. This. But I'm also very, very happy to go, it is good to let people go, I understand what's going on, because D&D can be so anarchic. That has been such a big lesson for me, too, mm. of... Of of not just allowing archetypes mm. just to be just to be existent, but the value of them, of just like, you need punches of flavor and description and connection in like this tiny amount of time yeah. and it has to be there and it makes the world easier I've and just, nicer <laughs> i've just thought of a cracking example the expanse great show for a bit went a bit weird but anyway <laughs> the expanse for me as a tv show when i first watched it worked because they're on the moon and, uh, and it's, it's weird and there's so yep. many things to try and understand but i know that that guy's a gumshoe because he's yes, wearing right. the hat. And yeah. I know that that's so reductive yes. and so mm-hmm. dumb, but I know what his arc is. I understand yes. what his arc is because he's a gumshoe and he wears the hat. So yes. I know we're going to watch him go through people's apartments and go, hmm, all the different clues mm-hmm. and like that yeah, sort of yeah. thing. Because of course we're <laughs> going to do that. And yes. it made the show work because even if you were looking at the weirdest stuff you couldn't quite fathom, you understood the archetype. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Perfect Boom. example. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Got it. End the interview. <laughs> Mic drop. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris just walked away. It's very dramatic. Very e- cool. English Sorry lit you couldn't paper. see it. English lit paper just passed. <laughs> yeah. <it's all> good. <laughs> so I think the last really big question that I, I, I had for you, mm-hmm. especially knowing that you just in the last what like handful of months, I don't know, time is meaningless in the, <laughs> in the COVID world, announced your streaming, um, you know, uh, stream team. And you know, last our year. was it last year already? I know, oh, yeah, it was last me. year. Fuck, <laughs> <laughs> I went in trying to be as vague as possible and still just poo, whiffed it. Um, re- you, you announced you have one, yes, uh, but also, you know, you mentioned that you're looking into maybe more games. I know you're always looking for more partnerships, all you know, mm-hmm. like all kinds of things, bringing in new people, yes, absolutely. What, what, what goals? Do you either you personally or mm-hmm. kind of you as kind of a member of the the leadership of Roll Together? Sure. Um, what what direction do you hope things go? What's the goal, and how how do you hope you're going to get there? With the stream team, we established very early on. We got access to making a stream team because we hit partner. Mm-hmm. You know, so we had done what we needed to do to hit partner, and that's great, and we were very proud of that, and we still are. Being Twitch partners is amazing. Mm -hmm. We had the ability to set up a stream team. And we went, do we want to do this? What what do we want to do with this? What are we ever going to achieve with this? Right. And I realized that one of the main issues I have with D&D streaming, sorry, TTRPG streaming in general, because not all of the stream teams stream D&D, is that everything I watch is people in L.A., and I don't mm-hmm. dislike people in LA. I mean, I do, generally speaking, but some of them are great. <laughs> um, LA's awful. It's just a terrible place. Um, but <clears throat> I'm sure LA's lovely if you really like LA, and I just don't like it very much. <laughs> me personally, don't like LA. This deeply, deeply <laughs> reminds me of of that like that tweet of you can tell when someone has been chronically online because they start apologizing and and hedging what they're saying. That's before totally anyone fair. has responded. I am to anything. hedging. You are correct. It was very funny. I, I, you know. <laughs> I, I, if I had to put this in a nutshell, I don't like leaving the house and I don't generally like people. Now, <laughs> other individuals can be lovely and great and inspiring. But if you give me the general public, go away. Um, I feel quite strongly about LA in the same way. I lived there for a bit. I worked there for a bit. It's terrible. It's so <laughs> fake. It's so cheap. It's so brutal. And everyone is mm. there dreaming. And you just go, what well, the, this is awful. Anyway, that aside. 
I have no problem with watching people in LA stream shows, and some of them are very good. But yep. I don't want to only watch people from LA stream shows. And a yeah. lot of the high profile shows, the ones that do well, the ones that people see, are in LA. The 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 like murderers row to use a baseball analogy of TTRPG creators of the DMs mm -hmm. of the players mm -hmm. of the people you see and look up to and get platformed a lot. Yep, LA exactly. For sure. I mean, like for better for worse, that is just the case very very frequently. Yeah. So the response to that from from the stream team setup was, do we want to focus on British streamers? No, there are some. Most of them are great, but we don't want to turn into this like the British team. That's not the point. And I just, I remember saying to um, when we were setting up stream to the uh, to the team manager, why don't we just make it all teams that aren't based out of LA? <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of where it went. Like we over the years, because people move in and move out. Obviously, we've had streamers based all over the world. Like one of our longest standing team members uh, is based in uh, Taiwan, I think. So. We're trying very hard to diversify and also to raise up voices and people who we, we can't raise up ourselves. Like mm -hmm. we have tried many, many times to expand the racial diversity of our team, of, of our um, player base. And we're still trying. I mean, it's, it's going better than it was, but it's not perfect. A shortcut, because we can't do it overnight tomorrow like that, is to go, well, let's promote other streamers who are not not white. Yeah. Like I don't want to be too cruel mm -hmm. about it, but are not white as a starting point. And then let's see what we can do from there. And it's been really great. It means that we're now looking at global streaming in a way. It means we're talking to global partners. Like our our, our yeah. dice sponsor is, is in Taiwan. And that's fantastic. Um it's changed how we approach a lot of online conversation. Like I have spoken to consultants and everyone else about, do we tweet more? Do we tweet more about this? Do we want to be a big profile Twitter account? And the answer is probably not, because it's not our focus. No, not, none of us are there going, we want to be famous. Like, let's tweet forever. They're going, no, no, if we're part of something where people will point at us all the time, that's better. And that's partly what the team's for, too. The ability to just go, we are part of a network of people who are all awesome, and we can signal boost all of them. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um... And then from there, meeting new people, meeting new players, um, working out how all those pieces interconnect has been wonderful. It means we have more players globally too, which is also good. It's a bit tough because of time zones, but um, well, you know yeah. this, you know this intimately. Well, but, but also, you know, the more people you get across the world, the more time zones can line up. Like, <laughs> and then you know, suddenly, like, we're in a situation where we have entire games happening and organized like by us, but are all being recorded whenever like that's all yeah. fine too i hope that's the way it goes to some extent i think if it if it ever got too expansive we might reach a problem of saturation of how do we organize that sure. many people and then that might become untenable also we can't do a huge number more shows a week because of the expense because we pay everybody like yep. adding a new show is a significant cost increase for us we can't just yes. go we've got the time let's do it um so we have to make sure everything is funded before we make any big decisions on that front so that, that's a big change as well I also think that all the channels I know that expanded beyond two to three days a week and started becoming like we're on every night really, really struggled to um, maintain tone. And I don't want to fall into that trap either. Like what yeah. matters to us matters to us. So it's very important yeah. to maintain. I think there's, va there's value in doing what you can sustain and, yeah. and fit and fits and yeah. just letting that be the case. You don't need to keep growing forever. Also, I, d I don't think... <sighs> This is a very boring business conversation, but I think it's worth saying. Like, it's not like sponsors have unlimited funds. Yeah. We can't go to them and say, We've added a new show. Will you fund that too? And they go, Yes, of course. They go, Not sure we can afford it. Like, yeah, here's your check. A lot of you the, do, you spend it however you want to spend it, but uh, here's what we're giving you. A lot of times, um, it's based on um, cost per mil, which is cost per thousand. The internet is yeah. weird. Um, it's based <laughs> on conversations around money that have very little to do with how much you know, we are doing, it's how much the sponsor can afford. And if we're yeah. suddenly going and saying, we want to do more shows and show more people more creative stuff, and we want you to give us more money, it's very likely they'll go, we don't have any more money. What are you talking about? A lot mm -hmm. of our sponsors and supporters are big in the TTRPG world. That is not a very well-moneyed world. It's it it's not. okay. Like, there's ways you can make money out of it, but it's not like someone's there going, I've got four million to throw at you. No bank's endorsing us. And frankly, I think it'd be weird if they did. So... <laughs> You know, like that changes things. And I'm not big on like, I don't want to like hawk out the company for loans and stuff like that. Like that's not really of interest. I don't particularly like the pay for your content model on Twitch either. 
you can only watch this live. If you don't watch it live, sorry, it's $10. Uh, well, there's my barrier to entry. I guess I'm not going to watch mm-hmm. that show. Like, you know, we're not big enough to get that. And even if we were, I think suddenly saying it's now $10 is a one very surefire way of pissing off a lot of people. What would the point be? Yeah, I, I think a lot of... A lot of setting up the stream team, a lot of setting up how it was going to work and what we wanted to do with it was to do with, there's kind of an ethos here of playing safe, Mm -hmm. of being diverse, of being fair, of paying people. Most of our team don't pay people because it's too expensive and they're too small. But the intention is there. We'd like to at some point. And that's all we ask. We don't really police that heavily, who's on the team and how it works with that. We have a team manager who handles it for us, who is fantastic. And we talk about all of the new team members for anyone gets signed on. But it's about signal boosting. It's about promoting that there are streamers all over the world who are awesome. Mm-hmm. That's basically the, the sort of bottom line of it, really. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, how on earth do you do streamers keep getting seen by more people? I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> this is a lot of work and luck. And even then, mm. is is not a guarantee of anything. No, not at all. But hey, that's the knife edge, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> I have 16 million other questions. Um, but for the sake of not having to edit 16 million other questions, mainly, I, I if that's what, really what it is. I tell you what. Pick one. Ooh. I'll, I'll ask one more question. Pre-lightning round. Sure. <sighs> well, ooh. Okay, I'll also ask you. <laughs> Do you want to answer a question about about like creative, like the creative work and bones of Roll Together, mm-hmm. like kind of the the story ish things, or do you want to answer a question like an advicey kind of question? It's entirely up to you. Damn it, you jerk! <laughs> hey, you know what I always say? Roll a dice. No, I know. I'm going to ask the dumb advice question. Okay, that's fine. So, oh, by the way, there's no such thing as a dumb advice question. It's only dumb advice to give. Somebody. That's fair. <laughs> the dang, the dang advice question. That's that fair. damned advance damned advice question. Advice. <laughs> so we we we've we've talked a lot about about safety, about inclusion, mm-hmm. about platforming in a way that everyone can be protected and tell the stories important to them and meaningful to them and hopefully to people who are watching. Mm-hmm. For those who are listening, whether they're publicly creative and, sure. and, and you know, kind of making shows or want to or, or whatever, mm-hmm. or who are at home want, and wanting to make a better, safer environment at home, mm-hmm. who are just wanting to appreciate a safe environment in, in other places and want to know what to look for or whatever, mm-hmm. what advice do you have for, for people who, who want to put in the effort Mm-hmm. What what guidance can you offer to people who want to who who see the problems and want to be part of a solution? Um, okay, I'll give some generalized stuff first because um, that's just sort of attitude and mindset, and then we can work that back into like practicals. In terms of attitude and mindset, if you feel that you're worried about safety in a home game or um, in a live game or whatever and you Mm -hmm. want to do something about it, the first thing to do is examine your um, privilege and bias. I mean, that should be something you do all the time in nearly every scenario, but I appreciate not everyone does, so I want to make sure that's flagged early. Mm -hmm. Just because you think your game is safe does not mean that it is. Just because you think that your um, setup is safe doesn't mean that it is. And, you know, people saying, oh, why do I focus so much on safety? because a lot of us have know what it's like to feel unsafe at a table. So mm-hmm. if you're coming to it from a place of, I'd love to know more about safety because I think my table is safe and I want to make sure, examine that bias. If you're thinking that it might not be, it probably isn't. And that's okay. First thing, of course, mm-hmm. it's not safe. Most things aren't safe. Life is not safe. But looking into ways to make it safer is just going to benefit everybody. So it's an easy starting mm-hmm. point there. It's it's always a good thing to consider. Conversely, if you're looking at it going, I don't need my table to be safe. My, my, I know my players and I know what they can handle. Do you? Because I've done safety forms for home games and no, I don't. I've done these people for, in some cases, over 10 years and no, I don't. So, and what you think can change. And yeah. what can change on the day. 
And that is something to be aware of and prepared for. So basically, I think I'm saying if you're interested in this, good. And if you're not interested yes. in this, you should be. So that's, that's an yes. easy starting point, I think. Now, in terms of practicals, there are many different safety tools out there, and that is good. Yep. There should be. Different people have different things that they want. Um, yes. Kiana Shaw and Lauren Bryant-Smith's TTRPG Safety Toolkit is the shit. It is full of everything you might possibly need, including Google Forms, including um, different uses of cards on screens to show people what you mm -hmm. want and don't want, or even for table play. Um, and I'll be sure to include that in the, in the description do. of the episode. Yeah, like the links, the links there, you can find it. And um, as you'll note from it, it is not a long document. It also mm -hmm. doesn't need to be. There's plenty mm -hmm. in there that you can use, but most of it is down to what you and your players want. And then if you take that to your players and say, I'd like to use some of this, what do you think they will tell you? And if some of them say, we don't need this, it's up to you to give the speech I just gave. Because if you want to be part of the solution, that involves fixing things that are part of the problem. And the biggest problem you're going to have with focusing on player safety is that some people don't think it's important. And I don't want to sound too reductive, but um, a lot of this comes down to if you are a cisgendered white man, which a lot of the D&D player base is, and I know it's changing and it's changing quickly, and that's really good. It's still yep. a huge part of the player base. You probably haven't been in a situation where you've not felt safe at the gaming table. Consider that there are people that will feel unsafe at your gaming table, and you probably haven't thought about it before. And much like the Me Too movement, just because we are in desperate need, I say we, it doesn't really apply to me anymore, just because people are in need of examining their own biases and choices doesn't mean you made any mistakes. It means that you're doing the right thing by examining how you look mm. at them. Very mm -hmm. important distinction. And this is yeah. part of that same thing. Yeah. I love that. Well, I'm glad I asked. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want an impassioned response? I'm just checking. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, yeah, that's like the whole, that's the whole thing with the whole show is it's, it's all just impassioned. That's the Look, goal. You're that's either going to get an impassioned response or the most off the cuff, couldn't give less of a shit mate response from me. That's just the way I work. And, and that's, that's what I want. That's like the, vi that is the vibe that I, I try to cultivate here. Um, speaking of it, speaking, give me your lightning. Go ahead. Give me your lightning. Yeah, I was going to say, speaking of, <laughs> here's some off the cuff stuff. Uh, as I say, uh, at this critical moment of all interviews now is the, the fabled gauntlet of questions. Uh, I'm sure never have there been such such intense questions put your way <laughs> then the reckless attack uh lightning round it is the same questions to every single person okay. across all of our uh, all of our attack guests uh other than sometimes i slightly reword it but do i just to make more sense do i have to give very short concise answers because it's a lightning round oh chris i'm so glad you asked <laughs> i tell everyone <laughs> there is no wrong answer to a lightning round question okay it can be one word I will give an appropriate pause to be like, is there anything else? But I won't say anything. Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, cool. That is the end of their thing. They said purple. Done. Check. It can be, I have a whole story that I would like to tell as That's part true. of this. Okay. And that is also fucking great. Cool. Or you could just be like, yeah, I don't have a good answer for that. <laughs> right. And then I'll say like, cool, next question. So there is no wrong answer. It can go on as long or as short or as non-existent as you would like. Are you ready, Chris? Hang on. For the fabled lightning round. I'm a person with an anxiety disorder. Give me a second to have a sip of water so I can make my brain go, people won't hate you for your answers, Chris. Good. No. The truth is they will, but I, I don't <laughs> care. Good, right. Off we go. <laughs> First question. Yes. Is your glass half full or half empty? Half empty. What excites you creatively, spiritually, and or emotionally? Passion. What does not excite you creatively, spiritually, and or emotionally? <laughs> I think being a dickhead's the wrong answer. Um, <laughs> I did. All right, I will interrupt. There is, like I said, no wrong answer. Being a dickhead no wrong is answer. the wrong answer. That's just where my brain mm -hmm. went immediately. Mm -hmm. I, I, I need to specify what I mean by that. Um, sh being short-sighted, closed-off, narrow-minded, um, arrogant... Mm -hmm. having the ability to think beyond yourself is important. So anything that isn't that is, is, is a turnoff. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite sound? Uh, it is my dogs, you know, 
I'm trying to think of which one that they all make a lot of. They both make a lot of sounds. There's um, a lot of sounds from a lot of dogs. They are different. Uh, just for the listener, they are actively yeah. looking at their dogs <laughs> on screen right now, just like really thinking about. They're kind of play fighting, and it's gorgeous. Ivor, can you save that pair of pants they've found? I don't know where they got it from. <laughs> Thank you, Daddy. Um. There's a little squeak that the smaller one does when he's particularly excited that is just adorable. <laughs> um, but also, I think my, my son does this as well, where there's just little sort of happy noises that will always make mm -hmm. me feel happy. There's nothing that can change that. Yeah. Happy noises from my loved ones. What sound do you hate? Nails on a chalkboard. What's your favorite word? That is almost impossible to answer. There are so many good words. How do I pick that one? That is not an infrequent. That is not an infrequent answer. How Spoiler, we're talking to a bunch of TTRPG nerds. I mean, it's going to have to be the word magic. That's a good one. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. What's your least favorite word? <laughs> The joke answer is obviously moist, um, <laughs> but but again, that's not that's that's been a real answer. So like, yeah, there's no wrong. I, I don't dislike words like that. I think they're all um, no. I think even words that are disgusting or gross have beauty in their own way. I can't think. I can't think mm -hmm. of a least favorite. No, it doesn't exist. It might be the like something re something that's mundane. <laughs> there might be a mundanity that I, I disagree with. <laughs> Or is that really the best word that you could have chosen? Or ah, yeah, absolutely. is that really the best word you chose? In which case, the word is um, what's that? What's the word that gets used to a um, word that means good or big? Excellent. No, I Ooh. like the word excellent. Great. I don't like the word great. Do I hate been... the word great? Again, it's not hate. It's least favorite. But I wouldn't say that I hate, <laughs> or it's my least favorite word. I mean, there's, there's, there's all of the borrowed words into other languages where they mispronounce them. I really hate those. Well, and again, sometimes it's sometimes it's the sound of words for people where it's the you know classic moist conundrum. But also it's mm. just like, no, right? Or like because of the, the meaning that the a word, word no has is very or the important. whatever. Without the word it no, is. there would be no consent. Yeah. Um, uh, this is the thing, right? I hate when people say gelato when what they mean is ice cream. <laughs> that really, that stuff like that really bugs me. Or like, because I'm I'm German. I'm not English. Phenomenal answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not English. I'm German, and um, a lot of people think that they know how to say German words, and they don't, and it's awful. Um, <laughs> I guess, yeah, stuff like that. Feigned multiculturalism. Mm. <laughs> the, my least favorite word yeah. is the concept of feigned multiculturalism when you're just say. eating some ice cream, you prick. <laughs> And, and see, there is no wrong answers. Yeah, so that is a correct answer. What tabletop role-playing game or D&D &D monster, and monster being the amorphous sure. term, have you not faced or run that you would love to? And it can be a combination of faced or run or, or neither or whatever. I mean, I'm struggling to think of any. I, I have faced or run basically everything because it's my job. <laughs> so, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm doing? I am opening D&D Beyond to look at the monster list to go, have I looked at anything that I've not faced or run or designed around or considered? And I can't find anything. I've run most demon lords in some capacity. I've run most dragons in some capacity. I guess there are some really weird little ones that I've never bothered with because they're too little. All right, you know what? I can, I can tell you a story on this that you will appreciate. I love Beholders. I love them very much. I have mm -hmm. one on my desk. I was going to say, there's a desk. I think there's a, a t-shirt. It looks like there may this be is a, a beholder this is on a beholder your shirt. That is correct. And I mean, obviously. I was going to say, and I saw a bit of tattoo. That was also that a beholder, a beholder as well. tattoo. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I love beholders. I think they're amazing. I think they're a wonderful concept for a monster. I think they're delightfully odd conceptually. Yes. And yes. Um, I love everything about them. It's great. It's fantastic. However... <laughs> I have never 
successfully run one in the way that I wanted to mm. because mm -hmm. players are wise to the idea of beholders. <laughs> so when yes. they experience one, they know what to do. Once the first time I ran a beholder, someone cast blindness on it and asked me to rule whether that would make the eye beams work or not. And I let them use blindness to cancel out the eye beams because I am a believer that if a player does something cool, you should encourage them for being awesome, not tell them, no, mm -hmm. no, the rules say I can still mm -hmm. use them. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I didn't do that. I said, you have successfully nerfed this thing, which became a balloon <laughs> floating on the battle going, what's going on? Where are you all? No, my <laughs> horde. And it was funny. We had a lovely time. It was, it was hilarious. And I, yes. And very memorable. I would imagine. I enjoy when a player comes up with something cool and it lets me turn this awesome idea into a train wreck I, 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 it makes me laugh and it makes me happy and it makes the players happy because you've they, they've had a cool idea and the dm's gone you're awesome here's what you did i think that's a very important part of dming but i digress um i've never found a way to run a beholder in a way that i have felt has captured their weirdness and their scariness yes. in a way that i want to at some point yep. i will i don't know when it will be but it hasn't happened yet I feel the same exact way mm. of Beholders, one I'd love to nail one day. You know, um, the Beholder fight in season one of Critical Role. I know that these were extra abilities and it's got like a horn of, is it a horn of Orcus? Which doesn't make any sense anyway, um, but it doesn't matter. Um, it added so, like that was an encounter that was scary. They were terrified. Mm -hmm. They spent a whole session planning the encounter. And of course it went wrong. Um, uh, the tension of that was amazing. And I've I, I've listened to it so many times and gone, God, I want to recreate that. It's so good, mm -hmm. and I've never been able to. <laughs> Damn it! Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I, what's your favorite adventure of all time? Pu and it doesn't need to be a D and D adventure. It doesn't also need to be a published one. It could be one that you experienced. It could be I really like 1999's The Mummy as an adventure. Uh, but whatever that means to you, what's your favorite adventure of all time? That is a difficult question to answer because there are, I don't have a favorite film. And the reasoning for that is simple. Once I have seen it, I'm kind of done with it. Like I'll watch it again because of a nostalgia value, but mm -hmm. the, that, the lack of surprise means it's kind of meaningless now. Yeah. Like, um, so therefore picking a favorite adventure is always very tricky. Mm -hmm. um, I think if I was going to answer this question, I would want to think about what is a good adventure that happens as part of a movie, which you could like, which bits do you want to replicate? Which bits of the adventure are good adventure bits, you know? Mm -hmm. And much as it is one of the most racist things ever made, it's Temple of Doom. Mm -hmm. Temple of Doom has them uh, in an inflatable raft skating down a mountain. It has bridges. It has skeletons. It has weird combat with things that rip your heart out. Mm -hmm. It has a dinner scene that's clearly not a dinner <laughs> scene. It's got all... I mean... That's what George Lucas was trying to make. Uh, sorry, that's what Spielberg was trying to make. Mm -hmm. um, but that's <laughs> film buffs out there. Um, but that's the point, right? They were trying to create the perfect 1950s boys own adventure. And they kind of did. That's, that's what it is. And it's great mm -hmm. for what it is. It's very racist though. So <laughs> yeah, I, right, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's the only Indiana Jones I can, I can watch without getting annoyed because it doesn't have all Nazis are evil. <laughs> which, as a German person, is very, very hard to stomach because that's that's someone's dad, motherfucker. Can you please not? <laughs> that's not saying that Nazis aren't evil. It's a very complicated question for a German person, which we can't get into right now, but put it this way. Yeah, makes sense. It's complicated for German people. What is your favorite tabletop role-playing game character of all time? It could be one you played. It could be one you watched. could be an NPC. could be anything. What has given you the most delight or joy or what have but you? Those are all different questions. Mm -hmm. Like my favorite. Well, but what is your favorite? But my favorite NPC will be the one I played most recently because that's how I approach every single thing I've ever done. So <laughs> it's always the next one's always going to be better. That's the point. Mm -hmm. um, I've like I've had some wonderful scenery chewing villains that have been great, but I then had another one that was better afterwards. So that's, that's unanswerable. Um, I'm not enamored enough with myself as a role player to say any of my characters. But if I say mm -hmm. any of anyone else's characters, I'm highlighting them when actually yeah. <laughs> the point is their interaction with other people. So again, it's very hard to do. I don't like any of the actual plays I have seen enough to highlight one character and go, that character is the most amazing yep. choice ever made because th that's not how that works. It's about the interaction. Although, if I had to, gun to my head, gun to my head, 
It's which I mean, I think for the listener, we should clarify that is has been the case for all these lightning round questions. Okay, right. is that there is physically some sort of weapon pointed at Chris and all of our guests at all times. It is impressive that you managed to get a gun into the UK, but um... we we are very prepared. Well, that's why we have a you know kind of a large like a spear kind of like pointed behind you is because it was just got too complicated. Somehow, spear to my back does not have the same ring as gun to my head. It really doesn't, but, but you know, we we work across different international cultures, you know, as best we can. If gun to my head, it's grog, strong jaw from the first scene of the critical role, and I will explain why because it is it is multifarious. Grog was made as a comedy character for a guy mm-hmm. who had never played D anD D before and who didn't know what he was doing. He became the heart and soul of that entire fucking team. And if you say it's anyone else, you are wrong. It's Grog. Watch it. <laughs> Every time anyone is sad, he's there going, oh, don't be sad, buddy. There's always, he's always there with a nice comment because Travis Willingham is one of the nicest humans who ever existed. <laughs> he tried to play an edgelord in the second campaign and it didn't work. He couldn't be edgelordy <laughs> enough to make it work. Like that's, And he's now playing someone who's also supposed to be an edgelord and has become a cuddly dad. He can't do it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> Grog is everyone's best friend. And he is. He is everyone's best friend. Any situation that someone is in, Grog's always there to pick people up and support people and help them. He backs everyone up. Every single time someone's going, he goes, that sounds like a great idea, because he wants to support everybody. And he's an idiot. <laughs> and the player <laughs> lets his character be yep. an idiot. Yep. In situations where being an idiot is the worst thing it's to very do. very bad. <laughs> <laughs> the player's like, I'm not an idiot, but my character is, and this is my hilt, I am playing to it. There mm-hmm. are so many examples, too many to name, where he does something that is abjectly stupid. <laughs> and the other players are going, why are you doing that? And he's saying, because I'm playing my character. And I, uh, that always impresses me, when someone makes mm-hmm. choices that are not good for them or their character, yes. because, it's what, <laughs> because that is the way that they're playing their character. I'm always impressed by that. That's very good. Mm-hmm. The most important thing of all about Grog Strongjaw that I love more than anything else is he's a barbarian, and I love playing barbarians. It's not my favorite. Yeah. Is it my favorite? It's one of my favorite classes. And my reasoning for that is very simple. D&D is full of complex questions about how you do stuff and where you go. <laughs> barbarians are not complex. It's great. No. And no. you can make them complex, and I thoroughly encourage making complex barbarians because they're great fun. But it means you can go, I'm an archetype, and then you can build in the detail that makes them really exciting and interesting. So yes, I... It ticks all my boxes if you put a gun to my head, but the others are also great. Mm-hmm. The final question. Mm-hmm. What gives you hope? What gives me hope? Honestly, not a lot. And I feel like in my lifetime... I have watched a world move away from an attitude and demeanor that I could appreciate into something ugly. Mm -hmm. Um, While there is positive change, it's always positive change because all things develop forward, thank God. It's not outweighing the fallback and the fallback gets worse and it gets continually worse. And the UK is getting continually worse, especially for someone like me. So, very little gives me hope about the real world. That's why I live in a fantasy one. That is, I'm afraid, the sad final answer you're going to get. There are no wrong answers. Only a world that could be a little more hopeful sometimes. Yeah. Chris, thank you. Well, not a, no, not thank you. Oh. Congratulations. Oh, Congratulations. Wow. Oh, my. For you, you have run the Reckless Attack Gauntlet, including the lightning round. Oh, now thank you so much for your time. Wait, hang, hang, on sec, hang on a sec. Fabulous. Put the spear away. Yeah, put <laughs> Yeah, you can put it away now. Uh, yeah. uh I, I wouldn't actually talk to him more oh. um, because technically they are trained to only take instruction from me. Oh, um, okay. and, you know, through video. That's why we have the video set up. Right. There are complex okay. hand signals. Can you that tell will be them delivered. then because they're still standing there looking ominous? I'm afraid until we hit stop on the recording right. that right. it's 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 actually kind of a part. No, of no, I appreciate it. But 
because as a reward, not only for not making any sudden movements around the man with the spear behind you, but also for the generosity of your experience and time and just kindness and quality of person, you have yet another opportunity to tell all the glorious people at home uh, who are listening where to find you, who you are, do all the promotional kind of things. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> Fine. Do it for do it for everyone else. I know. If not for I yourself, you know it's an you know? important part of being a streamer is to do the hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. But it makes me want yep. to punch a wall. Well, yep, it's <laughs> <laughs> so it goes. Hi, I'm Chris. I use they them pronouns. I am the head of production for Roll Together. That's Roll Together RPG on Twitch, YouTube, podcasts. Uh, we make D and D streams. We do two a week, and uh, they're always short story arcs, so you can always find more access points for doing so. Um, the amount of stuff online about us is enormous. There's social media, join us there. There's a wiki, there's a Discord, there's a Patreon where you can become part of the part of the team. And our patrons certainly do get a lot of insight into how we do and what's going on. So if you fancy <laughs> that, do join in. That's lovely. Um, yeah, we tell stories. Uh, we are playing D&D and we do abide by the rules. We do think that's relatively important, but it's not crunch. Like we don't do maps. Our minis are there to go look how pretty, not it goes five foot this way. Um, but yes, join us if you fancy some storytelling from a very gender diverse cast, certainly, and uh, aiming to be more so. Check out all the other members of the Rolling Together stream team. That's much more diverse in global sense of streamers from all around the place telling amazing stories together as well. Yeah, come along, join in the fun. It's 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 quite something, and with the amount of stuff that's going on at the moment, it is it is a it is a wave, an adventure. You can start to join in. Mm -hmm. that sounds perfect <laughs> chris once again i deeply appreciate you and your time here today Thanks. uh this was tremendous as expected and uh and and thank you i have i have no further words other than thank you 16 more times but i will i'll you know i'll 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 imply that as opposed to, you know kind of like show not tell can I, kind of situation can i have the last um, one just make uh, all right all right listeners thank you for joining us <laughs> chris chris we will, you will take us out. You will have the final word. Great. I will say, I vow to say nothing more on episode in three, in two, in one. Nathan, you are extremely talented. You are extremely wonderful. I am so pleased to have been invited onto this show. And I can't wait to see who you get on next. I'm so angry. At you. <laughs>